Hola! Hello! Mr. Stewart here. How you doing? Yes! Another math video. Dun, 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 dun. Hey, what's this guy? Hello! Hey, who are you? What are you doing on my screen? Mr. Raccoon? Hey, hey, hey! That's okay. I guess you're kind of cute. We'll let you stay. But you know what? We're going to shrink you. Shrinky, shrinky. Oh boy, you got tiny, didn't you? All right. Hey, welcome to another math video, my friends. My jungle friends. Let's go ahead and get started with another wonderful, fun-filled math video. They are just so fun-filled. I mean, my goodness. It's better than a ice cream cone. Well, maybe I'm exaggerating. Hey, as you can see, we're starting to use this learning target. It's new kind of jargon. Words that we use to describe basically the same thing. But anyways, our learning target, or if you prefer, objective. Okay, this is our purpose of why we're doing this activity, is to, to add decimals using place value strategies and relate those strategies to a written method. You may have recalled in a previous video, we did start to look at renaming units. And now we're going to have some fun using that strategy along with being able to add decimals. Yes, how exciting. Okay. Let's get started. So what do we have here? First of all, let me think to myself. It says here we have two tenths plus six tenths. Hmm, okay. Now we can use this by creating these little disks on our place value uh, chart. And, you know, I'm, I'm just saying basically um, the two tenths plus six tenths is eight tenths. Seems kind of simple, doesn't it? Very, very similar to whole numbers when you think about it. You have two and you have six. And... That would be eight, but the unit that we're using, that place value unit, we have tenths. So in a way, you know, this is kind of like saying, okay, I mean, I'm taking two apples plus six apples. This wouldn't work if I said, hey, I need to add these two apples with these six oranges. How many apple oranges would I have? We couldn't combine those. So we have the same unit, that's good. So by doing this, what we could do is we can say, well, here's one, Okay, there's two tenths, and now I can also do another six here. And as you see, we're putting them all in the same place value uh, column here, and we would end up with, of course, eight tenths. Yeah, I'd say that, yeah, even the caveman could do this one here. So let's go ahead and uh, move on to the next problem. Ta -da! Oh, whoa, 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 where'd you come from? Oh, I get it. I know why there's a raccoon. He's chasing the crayfish. That's why he had that look. Buddy, you better hide, man. They're going to catch you. <laughs> yes, those raccoons love those little crayfish. Yes. Or if you prefer, I don't know, maybe if you're down south, they call them crawdat. Kind of a cool little name. All right, I know where I'm going to put you. I'm going to really shrink you. Maybe, you know what? i just keep you like almost invisible there. So Mr. Raccoon doesn't catch you. So, yes, Mr. Tora, yeah? Oh, yeah, get back to the math. You got it, my friends. So now we have another problem here. We have two ones. We have three thousandths. And it says we're going to take that plus six ones and one thousand. Okay, well, first thing I want to do is I want to make sure I get my decimal in the correct place. Anything to the left, of course, the decimal point is a whole number. Anything to the right is smaller than a whole number. And it only gets smaller as you keep moving to the right. Where that is not true to the left. As you keep moving to the left, you get larger or greater, if you wish. But what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and let's use something called this. Let's show our problem. So I'm going to go ahead and show my two ones. Okay, there's one and there's two. I'm also going to show three thousandths. Ooh, it looks like it's the start of a little face. So I have my two ones and my three thousandths. I'm going to be adding, okay, six ones. All right, let me get those down. Boy, I'd be doing a lot of these, making the best circles I can. This guy got in a little bit of trouble here. All right. And this is 1,000. Okay, I'm going to bring the 1,000 over here. So I'm basically adding these together. Well, I can add these like units of ones together. And it looks like that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I have eight ones here. And then over here, I have 1, 2, 3, I have four thousands. So now I can say that I've added these like units together as with those. Now I don't have anything in here, so what do I do? Well, since we do have this decimal place right here, I don't have any tenths, so I could just put a zero there. I don't have any hundredths, so I could put a zero there. And then like so, we get another one of these little decimal points out here so you can see my number going across. What I can do here then is I can go ahead and actually show you the method and like, what did we do? Well, we had the first, the first one was two ones and three thousandths. Well, two ones, we didn't have any tenths, we didn't have any hundreds, but we did have, uh, what did I say? 
Did I say, yes, I said three. Three thousands. Okay, so I'm adding, and then up above we had, what was that, six ones and one thousand. So I had six ones. Again, no hundred, tenths or hundredths, and I did have one. And when I add that, you can see that three plus one is four. And now I bring my decimal point down because I need to keep all my units in the same place value column. And now I have eight. Eight and four thousandths. And that's showing you that algorithm. This is called an algorithm. Just the basic solving the problem. Now we have another problem here. And I don't mean like a problem like we're in, I mean like a math problem. <laughs> All right, so we have two tenths, five thousandths, and we have, we're going to add that to six hundredths. So you may have already noticed immediately that, look, we have one unit of tenths, we have another unit of a thousandth, and we have another one hundredths, okay? It's going to be hard to add all those again together. Let's see what will happen. Well, I'm going to go ahead and first get my, so now I have two tenths, so I can actually show that, right, by drawing two tenths. I also have five thousand, so I can also show that. And then it says I have six hundredths. Okay, I have all these different units. Now I need to add them together. Well, fortunately, I can add these together because I have two in each value. So it's just a matter of saying, okay, I have two tenths, I have six hundredths, and I have five thousandths, and I don't have any ones. Well, let's go ahead and do the standard algorithm. And this would be, uh, we would, uh, the first one we had was two tenths, so there's no ones, two tenths, and five thousandths. And now I'm adding just, I believe at the top was just at six hundredths. So no ones, no tenths, six hundredths, no thousandths. And now I have five, six, two, carry my decimal, needs to come straight on down, no ones. Look at that. We've showed the model of that problem. We've also showed the algorithm. Okie dokie. Yeah, let's move on, folks. Okay, let's do it. Why are you talking like this? I don't know. Okay, now we have, it looks like a mixture here. We have part of the written method showing 13 tenths, but we also have just a number here, one eight tenths. I see an issue here. I see the units are the same. We have tenths and we have tenths. That's good. I see some problems here, but then that's what math's all about. It wouldn't be fun if we didn't have problems. Yes, we have problems. Okay, let me go ahead and get my decimal point here. Again, we want to get that decimal point down right away, right? We want to put a few of them in there, just a reminder, the whole column, okay? In case I write down a little bit lower. It's important to remember that's where that decimal point is. So let me go ahead and model some of this here. There's one hole, so there's one. I'm going to go ahead and show that one right here. There we go. Okay, and now it says I have eight tenths. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and show that. I like doing this because you know what the when you look at a die it has four in this type of pattern look at that right away and go oh that's eight without having to count every little disc and then we have 13 tenths okay 13 is kind of tricky i could do what i could do since 13 is six and seven i'm going to go ahead and do my six down here there's another three and now i have seven okay we don't have dice and seven so you know maybe we can do four and then also on the dice it always shows three going kind of diagonally. Okay, so I have my six and my four is 10 plus three is 13. Now, you might notice there's a little bit of a problem here. We need to add these together, but it's, we have all these tenths. It seems kind of a problem here. Since we have so many, it looks like what we could do is we could take some of these tenths and turn them into a whole because there's 10 tenths in one hole. And I have, oh my goodness, I had eight, and then I had 13, so there's 21. There's a lot of them. Let me see, let me go ahead and first take 10. So here we have, I see, there was 13 here, there's eight. How about we take that eight up here and then take two more? So if I were to take these two right here, join them with this eight right here, what I could do is just kind of draw an arrow here, indicating that I'm going to take eight and two, 10, and I'm going to move them over there, and now I can make another hole, like so. So now I have one more hole. Now I also have four, I have eight, nine, 10. So it looks like I have another 10 here. So I could actually do this, again, drawing my arrow because I'm going to move these 10 out of here because I have a group of 10. Again, I have one more hole, and there you go. So I've actually now, taken two groups of 10, 10 tenths, made two more holes, and I'm gonna go ahead now and see what my total is. So let's look at that. We have three holes. I still have my decimal point here, and then I have one single tenth sitting here by himself, 3.1. Well, let's do the algorithm and check our work. Well, in this case, at the very beginning of the problem, you see we had 1.8, 
So I can put my 1.8. We were going to add 13 tenths. Well, 13 tenths is the same as one whole with three tenths. And now I add, I get my 11, carry the one. My decimal point needs to come directly down. And now I have three holes over here. 3.1. Woo, I love when things work out. Don't you just love it? Yes. So one important thing that we had to do in this problem that we didn't have to do in the previous problems is this one we had to regroup. We think of regrouping or renaming. We had to rename some of these tenths into holes. And that was one thing that was different because in the end, we basically had a lot. We had 21 tenths right here and we had to rename those. Okay, let's go on to the next problem. We have 100, so we're going to definitely need to show that in the column of hundreds. We also have eight hundreds. Well, because we have eight, I'm gonna do four and four like I have before. Now I have eight hundreds. I also have two ones, okay? And then I also have four hundreds. I have four, eight, 12 of them. That exceeds the 10, right, that we group in each place value. So I'm going to need to rename some of those. And so we can move those into the tenths column by grouping them by 10. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So we have 10, so that gives us one tenth over here, so I can do one disc here. We have 100, looks like to me. We have zero tens, we have two ones, we have one tenth, and it looks like we have two hundreds. You know, our number should be 102 and 12 hundreds. We had initially, okay, so I had 100, no tens, no ones, okay? All right, so we're gonna add those numbers. And that was being added to two ones, four hundreds. I can add those together. I get 12. I'm going to carry the one into the next place value, giving me one tenth there. Decimals definitely have to go straight on down. Straight on down. That's what I always say. Bring her down. Bring her down. Bring her down. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, here's two. And look at that. Is that beautiful or what? That's a piece of art. Ooh, I just love math, and I know you guys do too. Yes, tell me it's true. And we're gonna go on to another problem. This is gonna be kinda of interesting because how am I gonna show 148 thousandths in this little category? I'd have to draw 148 of those little disks. It's a little much. So let's let's think of another way. We know that there's 10 thousandths in 100, all right? And we also know there's going to be 100 thousandths in one-tenth. So could we just right from the get-go, could we say, you know what, since there's 100 of these in one-tenth, could we just say, I'm gonna give this one-tenth here, okay? That's gonna represent 100 of my thousands in one-tenth. That only leaves 48 thousands left. So that leaves 48 thousands here. Well, I don't wanna draw 48 little, little disks here, but since 10 thousands equals 100, I could draw four of the disks here and remember, four hundreds is the same as 40 thousandths. So that only leaves me eight left over here, which I could go ahead and show that now. Cool. Now, the reason why I slowed it down was I really want you to keep understanding the relation between place value. It's, it's a common core standard. Very, very important that we understand that. Okay, now we also have seven ones. I guess we can put those on there. All right, and then it says that I have 13 thousandths. I could put my 13 thousandths here, but since we already know there's 10 thousandths in 100, let's just go ahead and bring that one hundredth here, which is 10 thousandths, and that's just gonna leave three over here. It'd be a lot to draw, 13 of them. And when you think about reading the number, this will help you too. If you read the number 13 thousandths, you're saying no ones, you're saying no tenths that I can see. You're saying 13 thousands and that's how the number would be read and when you look at that that's where that 100th came over right here and there's your three thousands okay another way to connect let's go ahead and see do we need some renaming we do we have four eight and then we have three that's 11 so we can group that so i'm gonna go ahead and take those eight right here and then i'm gonna add two more see and that's going to give me that 10 now i have one we don't have to do any renaming we have seven over here let's write down our number looks like we have seven and I'm just gonna use it right by that decimal point. Okay, I have one tenth. It looks like I have two, four plus two, that's six hundredths. And now I have just that one thousandth remaining. All right, I have 148 thousandths. We're gonna add that to. Now we have eight plus three, which is 11. We have to carry that one into the hundredths column. So now we have five, so that we end up with six. One plus zero is one. 
And now my decimal place, remember? Bring it on down. Bring it on down. I'm sorry, I just love saying that. Okay, and then seven over here, and we get seven and 161 thousands. Yes, yes, yes. Can you see that? Oh my goodness, do I sound excited? It's because I am. Okay. We still have problems to do, though. There's still more. A lot of practice. This is, uh, you know, we need to keep practicing these so you really get the hang of this. I mean, feel free if those wonderful kids at home on your little iPod or your little, what do you probably have, iPad, who knows, any kind of uh, electronic device, you could actually solve this problem, put the video on pause, right, and then check to see how you did next to my video. Yay! Cool. Next problem. Oh, another one. Okay. Now, we already have our decimal plates there. Cool. So Now, we've done a lot of these problems. I think we're good. I think there's another page of another one. Oh, my goodness. If you want to really challenge yourself, go ahead. I won't put that in the video. This was sufficient, I believe. Now, my friends, I can't stress to you how sad I start to feel when I know that the video is coming to an end because this is it. But you know what? Don't cry. Remember, there's always another math video. There will be one soon. Now, live long and prosper, my